In more recent decades, and especially with the advent of the internet, it seems contemporary Japan and Japanese popular culture have earned the reputation for being quirky, wacky, and more often than not, just plain weird, particularly to Western eyes. While all cultures have their oddities, there's no doubt that a unique strangeness has implanted itself in many aspects of the Japanese experience, sprinkled in between all the boring and sterile bits that aren't much different from the rest of the developed world. The realm of gaming is no stranger to this supposed Japanese weirdness, and to illustrate this point, take a look at some of the following strange games that were conceived in Japan. Pretty weird stuff, right? Well, prepare yourself for a game that may be the strangest I've ever played, the curiously named Pulirula. The game is a simple arcade beat-em-up developed by Taito in 1991 that was ported over to the PlayStation and Saturn in 1997 by Axing Entertainment. It's part of a series of arcade ports the company published under the Arcade Gears label. I'll be taking a look at the PlayStation version here for this video. In the country of Radishland, time behaves according to a network of gears and machines, controlled by a large wind-up key. One day, a bad guy named Jack steals that key and thereby stops the flow of time. Thankfully, two children, Zack and Mel, are in possession of magic wands created by their grandfather, and it's up to them to save their town and the rest of Radishland from certain doom. The quest that unfolds is home to some of the most bizarre, random, and surreal images you'll ever find in a video game. I mean, just take a look at some of this stuff. What's with this large group of gaunt men who I can only assume are starving, surrounded by evil flowers? Why is there a random Heno Heno Mohiji doodle here on the wall? Here's a stage made up of MC Escher type backgrounds and other random stuff for absolutely no good reason at all. In the desert level, defeating the snail boss brings some heavy rain, flooding the area because time is frozen in the next town. Restore time there and all the rainwater rushes through town and sweeps you away, leading to a minigame where you have to repeatedly whack weird fishmen that jump around the water. And what the hell is this? But none of that compares to level 3, a place which is distorted by a man's crazy dreams. Here's the lovely imagery you're greeted with at the start of the stage. I'll let some of the sections of this level speak for themselves. And finally, what is in my opinion the strangest and most breathtaking oddity in the entire game. Big legs, and an entryway in between them. What mystery lies behind this doorway? Dare you open it to see for yourself? The build-up is killing me. Let's do this. What? Upon further inspection, you'll notice that the door leads to the vacuous domain of outer space. That opening between the legs houses the final frontier, where no man has gone before. The resting place of a pink elephant in his trunk, who pulls out the first moment he has a chance to. What does it mean? What does it mean? For answers, please contact Taito Corporation at Shinjuku East Side Square 2nd Floor. 
62730 Shinjuku, Shinjuku Ku, Tokyo, 1608447, Japan. Attention, Puli Rula, what were you thinking with the legs and the door and the elephant? If you find the answer to this question, please let me know and you can win this wonderful limited edition box set of Finder Love for the PSP featuring Lisa Kudo. In this special box, you'll find the PSP game software in addition to several photo prints of the lovely idol, a DVD movie album compatible with Region 2 DVD players, and a special Finder Love image bikini for whom its intended wearer, judging by the targeted demographic of the style of game, is unbeknownst to all. But in all seriousness, despite the wackiness that Puli Rula is constantly throwing at you, at its core, the game is just a really basic, bare-bones beat-em-up. Controls are pretty standard. The D-pad controls movement, X is the jump button, and square is used to attack. There aren't any combos in this game, which makes no difference since most enemies in the game are defeated in a single hit anyway. When your foes die, they transform into little animals, which can be collected for points. There's also a magic attack performed by pressing the circle button. The attack executed is random and can be anything from a horde of animals that run across the screen to a guy that bundles up all enemies into yarn balls and tosses them into a microwave. In addition to others. In total, there are six levels and a final boss, and the game is over in less than a half an hour. And of course, the game supports co-op play, which is almost as fun as watching and listening to the reactions of any friend you coax into playing this game with you. As far as extras go, a small mini strategy guide of sorts is included with the game, published by Gamist. If you don't know Gamist, it's a company that put out some of the best video game magazine books in the 90s. Really high quality stuff for game fans and collectors, and I highly recommend picking up some of their publications. Anyway, there's a section in this booklet that goes over the secrets in the game, which are accessed in the options menu. By playing certain sound effects in a particular order, like you're entering a password, you'll unlock a variety of different things, such as stage select, free play mode, and the ability to change the size of character sprites. Changing the character size applies to enemies and NPCs as well, which makes it an amusing extra feature. Going with extra large characters crowds up the screen, whereas going extra small results in everything moving at a faster pace. It's worth playing with these settings at least once, as they change the gameplay dynamic quite a bit. Surprisingly, and against all odds, Puli Rula made its way outside of Japan, but only in the form of the original arcade version. Outside of the PS1 and Saturn ports, the game saw a later home conversion as a part of the Taito Memories Vol. 1 compilation for the PlayStation 2 in Japan. This collection was released internationally as Taito Legends, but unfortunately, Puli Rula was taken out of the collection completely. So, is Puli Rula worth picking up? Yeah, I think so. While the game is definitely on the short side, and gameplay is as basic as any beat em up can get, it's a lot of fun, and the graphics and animation are gorgeous, the music is catchy, and it can often be found for cheap. If you just want a weird game for your collection, you can't really go wrong with Puli Rula. The experience is brief, but the memories last a lifetime. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to see me talk more about some of the other weird games shown here, feel free to let me know in the comments section and maybe I'll do a future episode on them. Thanks for watching.